Herkese merhabalar. Ben Burak Şolt. Donanım Haber olarak Nokia'nın çok önemli bir yöneticisiyle beraberiz şu anda. Avrupa e, operasyonlarının başındaki isim. Öncelikle kendisini tanıtmasını isteyeceğim. Sonrasında da ülkemizde Nokia ve 5G hakkında sorular soracağım kendisine. E, first of all, I would like to thank you for sharing your time with us. And I would like to introduce yourself to our viewers and newcomers. Of course, thank you very much. So my name is Rolf Werner. I work for Nokia as head of Europe uh, and also CEO for Germany. And uh, my role is um, to uh, to run the mobile network business um, uh, across 60 countries um, for you know uh, the entire Europe. Hmm. Uh, I would like to ask first the 5G roadmap of Nokia. In globally, in Turkey, what's uh, what's on the list? Okay, that's a that's a very difficult question. Actually, what's on the list? Because <laughs> we have, we have, as you can imagine, a lot on the list. So, so let me give you some brief explanation of mm -hmm. uh, what Nokia in general is doing uh, around 5G. So, we do have uh, roughly 329 customers on 5G already on a global scale. Um, we're running 110 uh, 5G networks as such. And uh, especially uh, in the last uh, nine quarters in a row, we've been growing our market share on mm -hmm. a global scale. So we are very successful in uh, what our technology will bring uh, going forward. Um, if you consider the latest innovations in 5G, mm -hmm. uh, we are really up to speed into ORAN, into Cloud RAN, and everything that relates uh, to, let's say, um, the latest technology around 5G. And with a lot of customers, we are already uh, discussing, um, of course, 5G Advance, 5G Plus, and yes. uh, going forward 6G already. So uh, we're we're really uh, at the, you know, high level of technology. Uh, I would like to ask, in terms of Turkey, uh, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of operations, ongoing operations, there is, and uh, what kind of future we will uh, we will see in Turkey in mm -hmm. terms of 5G? Of course. So Turkey is uh, in so far a very interesting uh, market for us because Turkey has so far um, yeah, no 5G uh, licenses auctioned. Mm -hmm. uh, as such, we think, uh, especially in Turkey, uh, the market potential is very important. Um, we do have business with all operators in Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, our, uh, let's say, market footprint is very important. We do have more than 700 people who mm -hmm. do work in Turkey um, uh, from the Nokia side. And uh, we are also uh, producing uh, 4G equipment uh, mm -hmm. here in Turkey. For example, um, together with Karel uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a joint operation. And this is uh, something very important because we consider uh, Turkey as a very important market. That's why we also uh, wanted to have local production, which mm -hmm. is very important. And going forward, um, with the 5G uh, coming probably in 2026, as far as we are informed. We hope so. <laughs> we hope so. Um, we think uh, it's, um, it's one of the most important uh, markets in Europe uh, because you have a lot around manufacturing, a lot around logistics, mm -hmm. uh, a lot about um, customers who care for, for secure networks mm -hmm. and high bandwidth networks. So with our technology in 5G, for example, when it comes to slicing, uh, when it comes to coding as a network, when it comes to open APIs, we are very much convinced that this is um, a possibility to monetize the 5G network yeah. as um, what is needed for an operator. Once you pay the license, you need the yeah. money to flow back. Uh, but at the same time, it will increase the competitiveness of uh, Turkey as a nation, mm -hmm. because with 5G, you can do applications which you probably cannot do today. Um, at the beginning, it will, of course, be uh, based on the 4G core. Uh, it will not be what we call the real 5G. Mm -hmm. So 5G as a uh, standalone, where you have a, a core end-to-end, -end, which is, you know, real 5G, will then be providing all of the applications that are needed. Mm -hmm. Think about a slice um, in which you can, um, for example, uh, run drones in a completely secure way with a bandwidth that is secured only to mm -hmm. you. 
or you have an IoT environment, uh, a shop floor where you're running robots, uh, for example, in this textile industry, which is very important mm -hmm. here in Turkey. So lots of applications you can do where actually um, you, you can either combine it with a private wireless network based on 5G, um, uh, depending on whether the frequencies will be given out also in, on, on to private uh, customers. But even if you do it on a public 5G network, you can provide um, slices and, and private uh, parts of it mm -hmm. for manufacturing and for factories, uh, but also for seaports, for airports, so everything's possible. We would like to see uh at least gigabit speeds on our phones, like no. mobile game, gamers like me. I would like to uh, individual channel for my phone for of games. Course, <laughs> of course, no, no, of course. For the consumer side, I think uh, um, thinking down the road, 26, and of course uh, you have all these innovations in mind when you have, uh, you know, the new goggles of Apple. Uh, you know, yeah. when you think about uh, gaming uh, on high speed. Um, so especially for the consumers, it will be very, very compelling and exciting uh, possibilities. I always refer to the industrial applications mm -hmm. because of course there's at the beginning a lot of, let's say, research in there. But thinking about the consumers, um, we are already testing a lot about this, uh, you know, customer experience, for example, in mm -hmm. events, when you go to ice hockey stadium, when you go to a football stadium, yeah. Um, you know, the completely immersive experience mm -hmm. you may have once you get into a stadium. You could also have the perspective, for example, of, you know, the player on the field mm -hmm. or the goalkeeper or, you know, uh, whoever is running around. Maybe the referee is uh, carrying also a camera going forward and, and that could be immersive. Without lack. Uh, of course, without uh, lag, like. <laughs> this is the most important. Yeah. I mean, today, let's face it, you go to a stadium, usually you have a problem simply to upload yes. uh, your, your WhatsApp pictures. And, yeah. and, and that's something which should be completely over. I mean, not only with 5G, mm -hmm. but even, I mean, thinking about 6G, we're going to have much higher uplink and downlink uh, um, uh, speeds. Because one of the problems I have is uh, when you in a crowded space like yeah. stadium, uh, you can't not use the internet properly. No. Uh, it, it becomes impossible without uh, with, with so many people using of the course. internet. So five G is at least so important for me for this kind of situation. <laughs> no. no, I can imagine. So five G as such and. Uh, 5G SA uh, definitely, and of course 5G plus, um, latest 6G, um, think about it, we have already signed MOUs with Turkcell and with Turk Telecom, mm -hmm. just at the uh, Mobile World Congress for 6G. I mean, yeah. we don't even have 5G uh, here, yeah, yeah. but we think <laughs> ahead. And uh, once we think about, you know, innovation in the Turkcell uh, network, but also innovation in the Turk Telecom mm -hmm. network, um, the baseband, whatever we talk about, uh, the radios, they need to get prepared for 5G and for 6G going forward. Mm -hmm. So lots of, let's say, innovation discussion is happening and we're very, very uh, yeah, um, confident that going forward you will be able to send your pictures <laughs> out. <laughs> I would like to share instantly no, from, no, the site, from the site. This will be possible. Uh, I would like to open an, another subject, mm -hmm. AI. AI mm -hmm. and 5G, is there a correlation yeah. between them, uh, each other, uh, like uh, are they accelerating each other or uh, there is a correlation between them like AI enhancing the 5G or uh, thanks to 5G, uh, AI is faster or more capable, uh, I would like to hear from you. So there are various aspects, I mean uh, we as Nokia have a, have a great partnership with NVIDIA um, and uh, when you think about AI, it's all about, you know, computing speed mm -hmm. and the way you are processing uh, data into useful information. Mm -hmm. And uh, taking this forward, um, taking your example of you would like to upload uh, a small video. Mm -hmm. If you want to do this, um, you need AI being embedded in the network. Yeah. So that being embedded in the network uh, could be used to um, to make a more intelligent traffic management mm -hmm. than probably what you have in some other places. So I take the example of events. The moment you know there is an event, but also the moment you know there is, for example, 
um, within a match always the same time when you know there's the break when people are using their phones mm -hmm. much more you need to have higher bandwidth of yeah. course traffic management means traffic management being AI based you know exactly once there is yeah. more bandwidth needed once there's more capacity needed that can be done on the other side it could also be done to save energy at night mm -hmm. when for example between two and three o'clock there's not much traffic you could completely bring uh, your, um, your, your antennas, your network, your, your BTS is completely down to what we call um, uh, uh, extreme deep sleep mode. Mm -hmm. And that would mean you're more or less consuming nothing on the energy yes. side. And this is uh, something very, very compelling for a lot of operators. Mm -hmm. And uh, for us, we think uh, that as a green idea is also um, very important going forward. So think about traffic management with AI. Think about automization mm -hmm. when you are detecting, um, uh, you know, flaws on the cyber security side, when you are detecting issues um, through AI, uh, which are relating to, to traffic issues as such, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, automized uh, fixing of these yes. problems so you keep up a quality which is perfect and in the final end um, AI of course has another aspect is in the way how you you and me use the network mm -hmm. because we are eager to learn more from the internet which uh, probably will then provide us with like we said immersive reality AI will be used in the way that AI is able to tell whether you or me is using yes. the device or we're not even using devices going forward. Mm -hmm. Because what we think is 6G, the big difference will be that the network is able to sense. So we're not using as much devices as before. The uh, network is able to sense uh, subjects and objects, for example, for traffic management, mm -hmm. All that will be combined with AI and if you don't have, you know, the artificial intelligence and the deep learning mode behind, then there will be no, uh, you know, future applications possible. Uh, for the consumer side, there is pin uh, variables like recognize the uh, place around you and you will, you will, uh, you will not you would like to not wait for the recognition like uh, this is chair, this is table. Right. Uh, you show it to something, you wait for it to uh, respond. And this takes like sometimes with some devices, five seconds, six seconds. Uh, this is boring. Yeah, uh, yeah. indeed. You, you would like to have instant response like of course. this is table, you can use it for this, this is chair, you can use it for this or you can do this combination. Uh, I would like sure. to hear instantly no, no. and it's, uh, it will be instant in, yes, uh, yes. In, in, with 5G. I hope so. I, I would like to try. No, uh, no, of course. I think uh, there's, there's a lot uh, of possibilities which you cannot use today, but in the future going forward, 5G, 6G, whatever, it needs to be in real time. Mm -hmm. um, you need to have that in, in many situations in real time for security reasons. Mm -hmm. um, think about a remote surgery. Yeah. Uh, you <laughs> cannot wait, you know, whether uh, you have to do this or that uh, mm -hmm. when you have, you know, a surgery ongoing. Mm -hmm. Um, there will be remote instructions, for example, from, from doctors who work together, uh, who sit on three uh, different continents mm -hmm. uh, when they do uh, very complex surgeries. And uh, I'm highly convinced uh, you do not need um, any kind of, you know, uh, Wi-Fi application or uh, anything that's connecting not through 5G mm -hmm. or going forward 6G because uh, it will then even be more secure. Yes, and there, and there is uh, one subject I would like to ask most. Are we late in Turkey for 5G? Or there will be leap like 5G advanced, 5.5G, like yeah, yeah. Uh, there so is same like yeah, yeah. 4G, but it's advanced, then it will be 4.5G. But uh, yeah, yeah. the essential part is, are we late yeah. for it or 
so I'm a, I'm a very polite person. So okay, okay. <laughs> but I need to be also very honest to you. Uh, thank you. As a, as a matter of fact, uh, most of the countries, uh, let's say in the Western and in the European world, uh, um, have uh, 5G uh, implemented. Um, this is maybe the part of where uh, Turkey has to, you know, catch up a little bit, I yeah, would say. Yeah. Um, implementing 5G, as I just said, mm -hmm. um, and you take Western Europe, uh, in a way has shown that 90% of these 5G networks are obviously not 5G SA. Mm -hmm. So they are simply, you know, taking off the traffic from, you know, the LTE, from the 4G, <laughs> and then bring it into 5G, where you have the radio, but all of mm -hmm. the rest, more or less, most of the rest, definitely the core is still on, on 4G uh, mm -hmm. uh, technology. So the advantage for, for Turkey is, well, first, being a little late when it comes yeah. to, you know, auctioning and licensing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But at the same time, you can benefit big time from the experiences that you see in other countries uh, okay. where, of course, um, they are maybe front runners in a certain way, mm -hmm. but have they already exploited the 5G network really? Have they found the right applications to monetize the 5G network? Mm -hmm. Um, are they running 5G SA? Most of them not. Mm -hmm. So that's a chance for Turkey where they say, okay, look, uh, we have seen what the others have done wrong. Mm -hmm. We can do it much better. Yeah. And it's so important for this country with all this potential. It's going to be a great example. Like uh, we have, uh, like uh, we don't have a package of unlimited data uh, yeah. in Turkey. So okay. maybe with the 5G, uh, or 5.5G, I don't know what, what, what will be the title. We can see the unlimited data package uh, and... Uh, I'm pretty uh, sure this is coming. Yeah. I mean, you as a gamer need this for sure. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Especially for the AI, I upload the videos uh, oh, uh, sure. and images. Images are okay, but videos are extremely yeah. uh, high capacity. And uh, like this video is about 100 gigabytes okay so i need to upload it for my editor to editor to edit it yeah, yeah. so uh, i need faster and faster uh, upload speeds of course and in unlimited data package i would like to hear from our operators. we will tell our customers this is exactly what you need <laughs> <laughs> Yanımda şu anda gerçekten çok yetkili bir isim olduğu için ben de çok heyecanlandım. Önümüzdeki 5G yenilikleri için çok güzel şeyler geliyor olacak ve bunu Nokia e, ciddi bir şekilde buradaki ortak partnerlerle beraber üstleniyor olacak. Thank you for everything. Thank you very much. Thank you. Görüşmek üzere, hoşçakalın arkadaşlar.